Well, $418 million settlement by the National Association of Realtors is expected to usher in sweeping reforms to the real estate market. The settlement came after a federal judge ruled that an existing rule requiring compensation to a buyer's agent artificially inflated housing fees. To discuss the implications for buyers and sellers, that's where again Bill Pulte, he's Pulte Capital CEO and Jeff Taylor, emphasis a digital risk founder and mortgage bankers association. Uh, gentlemen, good to have both of you on today. Um, Jeff, uh, Bill, let me start with you first uh, by talking about just sort of put this in context for us. I mean, we keep hearing these sweeping reforms likely to happen. This is a significant shift within the real estate market. Um, put it in context for us. Well, the reality is a home is made up of obviously lumber and drywall and roofing and all kinds of materials and stuff. A big part of it too is fees, taxes, title insurance, mortgage insurance, uh, to the extent that one has all of those things. And then another thing is the realtor fees. Now, what's so interesting about this landmark thing is that now basically the 6%, in my opinion, is really up for grabs. And you're going to see people become very creative. You're going to see companies become very creative as a way towards being more competitive. And I think in an inflationary environment, uh, all creativeness, in my opinion, is welcome. And I think that this is potentially very good for consumers. Well, what kind of creativity are we talking about, Bill? I think, you know, you could see potentially people reduce their commissions. You could also see, I think, some creative thinking like the builders have done, where they've gone in, as you just mentioned, or your colleague just mentioned, the builders have gone in and bought down mortgage rates uh, as a means of making their homes, meaning new homes, more attractive for home buyers. I think you could also see where you have potentially realtors being incentivized by some of the big builders. I think it's a very, you know, obviously this is kind of a biased statement from my perspective, but it's a very bullish time, I think, because the big builders are taking market share from smaller builders all across the country. Uh, Jeff, to what extent do you think this opens up the market? I mean, I, I will I will admit that I do follow quite a lot of real estate agents online. So many of them already taking to social media to say, look, we will meet you where you want to be, especially for sellers who are concerned that the cost may come down on their end or come up on their end. Yeah, so it's under uh, digital risk. What we do is we help lenders make sure that they're providing quality uh, mortgage loans. As an MBA board member, also very responsible for making sure the housing market functions correctly. And this has the potential to be, uh, as I was saying, a little bit of, of a game changer. There's always been this perception that it's 3% and 3%, 6% or 5%, depending upon where you are. And now as you present that, that contract, look, theoretically, the seller, could, the seller agent could say, hey, we're gonna charge 3%, but we're not gonna provide anything for the, the, buyers, the, the buyer on that 3%. How is that gonna affect that behavior? That could change a lot going forward. I think in a lot of other industries, as far as commissions, they've always been negotiable. In housing, in, in real estate commissions, they've been negotiable too. But I would tell you of all, if I look at money management and other industries, this has been sort of the, hey, it's 6% coming out of the gates that we've had for many years. So I think to the point of getting more creative, trying to say, hey, how much am I really going to have to pay in commissions? I think that dialogue's going to be happening a lot more at the signing of a listing agency, right? I thought we're signing the listing right now than it has historically. And once that conversation opens up, and it's no longer, this is just the way that it's been for 40 years, and here's the way we're entering our transaction, you're going to see a lot of other potential ways for people trying to get that overall fee down on both sides, I would imagine. Uh, Jeff, t to what extent do you think that reduces the rate on the seller side? I mean, it's been at 6%, as you said. The argument has always been this is just the way it is. How does that come down moving forward? So uh, look, if, I'm, if I'm the seller right now and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a listing and I just said, okay, it's 6% and it says, okay, but I'm flooding my listing agent and I say, wait, do I have to pay 6% as a seller? I see I'm reading documents, it's 3%. Do I have to offer the other 3%? Why don't I offer 3% and why don't my seller and if my buyer split that 3%, those are gonna be a lot of the discussions that are gonna happen more now because it's different, okay? And, and also if I'm a buyer's, if I'm a buyer's agent right now, I'm, if I go to MLS, I'm not gonna see the, my, my 3%. There's other ways to figure out, other websites to go to see what the seller will be offering as far as a commission to that buyer's agent, but it changes the landscape, right? It gets people to be more creative. They have to check different places. And as consumers become educated on this, the questions coming in on why does it have to be 6%? That starts to really ramp up that conversation. And it's gonna be, especially, that's gonna change the industry, I think, quite a bit. Now, if you're in the market right now, it's important to know this is expected to go in 
in July of this year. So I would, you know, it's going to be business as usual between now and July of this year. But if it does go into effect, it's going to be a lot more discussions kind of going forward. Uh, Bill, let's talk about the data that we got out this morning. You know, Danny just laying it out for us, saying that there's certainly a lot more optimism here for the spring selling season when you look at the data that came through on housing starts for February. What are you seeing? We're seeing that things are really kind of holding steady, like you said, in some markets. In some markets, it's really hot. I think you're going to have a strong spring selling season. I think it might not be as good as it was when mortgage rates were way lower and things were kind of gangbusters, but I think that you're going to see a very strong spring selling season. I'll just mention one thing. I think that your colleague was absolutely right. It depends on which market you're in. Uh, if you're in some of these markets where there's a lot of supply and stuff, you're not going to see the type of uh, home price appreciation or kind of as strong of a spring selling season. On the other hand, if you're in Florida or if you're in some of these geographies that are doing very well, I think you're going to see a, a very competitive spring selling season. And I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, people try to take market share. And the big builders, frankly, will probably do pretty well uh, coming up into this spring selling season. Uh, finally, Jeff, when you look at where the market has been, um, yes, rates have been elevated. Yes, inventory has still been very much limited. And what you're seeing increasingly are, are those who are in the market, are those who are existing homeowners. When you think about where the conditions are today, where they're likely to move in the next several months, where does that leave first-time homebuyers have had, who have had such a hard time getting in? I think we're leaving the first time home buyer is actually, I think it's, it's starting to be slightly better. And what I mean by that is last year we had, and right now we have about 1.66 new homes and apartments being built currently under construction. Guys, if you think about a decade ago, we lost around 6 million units coming to market for various different reasons. So I think, and again, depending on where you are, I happen to be here in Florida where things are incredibly tight. There is more inventory coming to the market. You look at Pulte, you look at Lenar, the big home builders are really putting a lot into the market. So um, at a 7% interest rate right now, that's still, you know, probably higher than historically has been. But if you look at the NBA and what they're projecting, they're saying it's going to get down to around 6.6%, hopefully over the course of the next three to, uh, three to four months. That should help affordability a little bit, coupled with 1.66 million houses under, under construction. If somebody wants to sell their existing house and that end goal is to get into a new, a new house, that's a better point in time to do this now than it has been for the previous five years. So I think overall the housing market's incredibly strong. Uh, I don't. I think price appreciation will stay sort of flat to rising over the course of the next year. And if everybody is right and we do see some Fed rate cuts on the second half of this year, um, you could see even a, a stronger spring slash fall uh, home buying season. Bill Pulte, Pulte Capital CEO, and Jeff Taylor, Emphasis Digital Risk Founder and Mortgage Bankers Association board member. It's good to have both of you on today. Really appreciate the perspective.